Hi, I'm Allison Fleck with Bloom Culture Flowers. In today's tutorial, we're going to be talking about bridesmaids bouquets. Um, I have already pulled all of the flowers that we're going to need for our bridesmaid bouquet, and I would suggest doing the same. When you work with Bloom Culture, we give you floral recipes, so it will tell you how many flowers and what varieties that you will need for each bouquet or centerpiece. Okay, so for the bridesmaids bouquet, I have already uh, pulled all the flowers that I'm gonna need for it. I've already um, selected a few pieces of greenery and I've stripped off the excess leaves so that the stems are clean. It just makes everything easier and it makes everything run smoothly. Um, similar to the brides bouquet, I start with greenery. Um, I suggest just making a simple X with your greenery and then we'll start to layer in um, all the other greenery components and other flowers. Um, bridesmaids bouquets can be as simple or as elaborate as you like them to be. In my experience, most bridesmaids bouquets are a smaller version of the bride, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. Um, recent trends have them, you know, all greenery and the bride has is the only one with flowers. So um, in this aspect, I say you do you. If you think it's beautiful, then go with it and we'll help you get there. Okay, so back to the construction of the bridesmaids bouquet. So I start, to hold or arrange my greenery in an X. Um, and I just layer in a few pieces here just to get started. Sometimes getting started is the hardest part, so just keep layering in and just keep pushing through. Um, you'll get there, I promise. So um, we've got a couple of varieties of eucalyptus. Um, I've also pulled some varieties of salal or lemon leaf. It really helps just fill in the bouquets. Um, so I'm going to add a few pieces of this here. Um, don't hesitate to play with placement. If you like it on the first placement, great. If not, try again. There's nothing, there's nothing holding you back or there's no rules or right or wrong. Um, especially if you've never worked with flowers before, just keep trying. Um, personally, me as a florist, even though I do this, on a weekly basis. Um, starting each wedding and starting each new um, bridal piece or bridal bouquet, um, you know, it might take a little while. The first one will be the longest one and then you'll start to pick up speed after that because you'll start to feel more comfortable. Okay, so I'm gonna layer in a little bit more of the eucalyptus and I feel like we've got a good foundation here. This isn't an extravagant amount of greenery. It's a few pieces of the gunai eucalyptus, a few pieces of salal, and a few pieces of willow. Um, I, again, I start with greenery to help kind of create that foundation or that base and then we will start layering in the flowers. Um, I tend to start with um, blooms or flowers that are a little bit more linear and that have a little bit more reach and I still continue with that X shape and sometimes you can thread it through your hands and thread it through your fingers so you're not just layering on front and back. Again, like I've said earlier, um, if you have a really long stem, go ahead and just trim that. It's going to help you hold the bouquet, balance the bouquet and things won't feel so awkward. So I like to layer in the stock um, for its linear bloom structure. And again, creating that X shape. Don't worry about this area just yet. Just kind of focus on your greenery, on creating that foundation. Um, again, if you can hold your hand a little bit loosely around the flowers, you can actually kind of push and pull some of the greenery and some of the blooms here. Um, next, I like to layer in the spray roses. Again, we've talked about um, wow, this is just a great bunch of um, a great bunch of blooms. But you know, this guy doesn't really need to be on here, so I like to snip him off. You're gonna get so sick of hearing me say this. Save this for later. What like what a gorgeous bloom for either a bud vase or a boutonniere. Okay, so this is where I start to fill in that middle area. Um, again, working with that X pattern. Just start to fill in right there on the bottom. Sometimes you'll have, um, like when you're working with things, there's another bloom right there that I'm just gonna go ahead and snap off. If something's not working with you, don't be afraid to move it or snip it off or get rid of it altogether. If it's, if it's really causing you some grief or you're just getting really frustrated with it, it's not worth it to keep it. So if you need to snip something off, go for it. 
Um, and like I said before with the bridal tutorial, sometimes I like to layer in on the front and in the X shape and then on the back on the X shape and that just helps you get a full well-rounded bouquet. Sometimes you're going to have a front and a back. I like to call it the butt, but again, we'll address that with putting um, some extra greenery in it because most, not most, everybody's going to hold it facing outwards. All right, I am going to layer in our three, three roses here. Again, just filling in some of those areas that um, you might see that have a little bit of holes with them. Um, and don't be afraid to play with the depth by pushing the roses in or out. That just helps create dimension um, and interest to the bouquet. So again, layering in some more of those roses. Again, if you see some chewy petals or some of those guard petals, go ahead and just snap those off. If you don't, you don't have to do it um, while you're constructing the bouquet. You can actually take a look at it look at it um, after and, and just kind of clean everything up. All right, so we've got our three beautiful roses in there. Um, we have in this recipe, we're gonna be using two of the pink Lysianthus. Kind of strip those down a little bit. And I think that would look really pretty layered in right there. I like Lysianthus. It gives you all of these really neat um, extensions or little blooms that come off that help with making a more organic um, bouquet. I really, I really like that. I think that's really fun to play with those elements there. Um, and then in this recipe, we're going to have two of um, these really stunning um, pink light blush ranunculus. Come on. Who volunteers as tribute? Let's do this. So with the ranunculus, since they're such a beautiful specialty flower, I like to give them a little bit of space to stand out on their own. But if you want, you can also have them um, kind of threaded through the, through the front. They're so gorgeous. We just want to make sure that, that they are seen and absolutely stunning. All right, sometimes at this point, I like to go in and add a little bit more greenery. We will a lot, um, Typically, you know, a fifth of a bunch, a sixth of a bunch of greenery to help you, you know, quantify what you're going to need. Um, but greenery a little goes a long way. And sometimes if you're working with bouquets and you think, you know, this does need a little more, a little more greenery or a little more interest in the front, um, there's always room to do that. Keeping your stems a little bit shorter and manageable helps. All right, so this beauty is really starting to take shape and look really gorgeous. Sometimes blooms will feel like they get a little lost. Um, you can kind of um, tease them out a little bit, um, give them a little bit more space. Don't be afraid to, um, for lack of a better term, manhandle them. They can handle it. Just try not, if you're working with white blooms, try not to touch the petals too much because they can start to deteriorate in um, and lose a little bit of um, of their really bright white. All right, we've got one more Lysianthus in this um, in this design. Again, taking off some of these little satellites and keeping them in our little vase. Like it's so funny because sometimes when you pull um, little pieces off, they can start to make an arrangement all their own. And sometimes I look at these and I'm like, that's that's really pretty. And I wasn't even thinking about it. All right, let's thread this in over here. Add a little bit more color and interest over here. All right, so this is really um, starting to take shape. I think we're I think we're almost done with this beauty. Um, again, if you start to see blooms get a little crowded, don't hesitate to just move them and give them a little bit of space. If you need to cut some of these little satellites off, feel free to do that and kind of push and pull a little bit until you're feeling really good um, about the shape and the texture of everything. Again, if you want to layer in a few more pieces of greenery, um, it's totally up to you. Um, that's one really great thing about DIY is um, you're not really having to verbalize and communicate exactly what you want to a florist or someone else. You can actually do it and say, you know, I want a little bit more greenery. I want a little bit more floral. Um, and we will help you with that in all of our tutorials and in the ordering process, which um, we know flowers like the back of our hands, so um, it's kind of second nature to us, and we love we love teaching and love helping. 
Um, last, I'm gonna layer in some of the wax flower. I think that it's just a beautiful element. It adds a different, smaller scale. Um, and it's called a filler flower, but it really does just add another layer to the bouquets. I tend to thread these through to give little pops where I see, you know, maybe there's a hole or maybe there's a gap that you think could use um, some more interest. And that's this is where this flower really comes in handy. Um, layering in, in the back and behind on the side is really pretty. I think that's starting to look really beautiful. I mean, I'd, I'd walk down the aisle with this, wouldn't you? Um, let's add a few more bits and pieces in. And again, some, at some point you might have to start threading through because your bouquet has grown to a size to where, you know, if you just start working on the X, it'll get really heavy on the sides. See, and again, don't be afraid to, to try different placements out. Um, and don't be afraid to, to put everything down and start all over again. Um, I've been doing this for years and I, I, I do that a lot. You know, sometimes you just have to walk away and, you know, give yourself a pep talk and remind yourself that these, these are flowers and that you're the human, you know, and, and, you know, just, just their place in the world. Um, but I think this bouquet is really starting to come together. Um, if you see, like I said, if you see a few pieces in the back that you want to fill in, don't hesitate to pull from, from the excess that you've created from all the little pieces that you've um, stripped down from stems. But the back, I mean, it looks, it's not, you know, it's not the fullest and it doesn't need a ton of flowers, but you can fill it in a little bit with greenery in the event that, you know, someone's holding it a little bit wrong. It'll still look really beautiful. Okay, so I think that we are pretty much finished with this um, beautiful bridesmaids bouquet. Let's go ahead and use our tape to wrap it. Again, stretch your tape out, clasp it with your thumb right there. And then I just wrap it as, as you know, kind of manhandle it a little bit, just wrap it around. It doesn't need to look beautiful. It just needs to hold all the flowers together. Pull again, stretch it out. Just give it a nice quick wrap. Then if you want to, you know, clean it up a little bit, then you can make sure that it's laying a little bit flatter. You can kind of pull your, um, your stems in a little bit. Um, make them a little bit more manageable and less, you know, sprawling, if you will. All right, rip that tape off. And here we go. A beautiful bridesmaids bouquet. I felt like Martha Stewart when I said that. Beautiful bridesmaids bouquet. No, but really, I'd walk down the aisle with it. It's not super complicated. We've got um, really beautiful roses and flowers and greenery. All right, there you have it. This is our Bloom Culture Bridesmaids Bouquet. These are really spot on with what we typically use for bridesmaids bouquets. Again, if you want something more elaborate, we can help you out with that. If you want something more simple, we can help you out with that. There's no right or wrong. We just want to help you get the wedding that you want at a price point that feels comfortable. Again, like I said earlier, all of these varieties of flowers and their quantities will be in the comments below. We'll have the exact recipe. Uh, we want you to know that um, these flowers and these quantities are really typical. So you're not going to see a tutorial that we've done and then get your flowers in and think like, those don't even align or match up. You know, everything that we create you are more than capable of creating. Um, but if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to comment below or shoot us an email at hello at bloomcultureflowers.com. Um, I am Allison Fleck with Bloom Culture Flowers and thank you so much for joining us today.